Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and this video we're continuing on from where we left off last time. So last time we added the weapon switching in, and this time I think we should add a little bit more oomph to the weapons, which means let's add some effects to the actual hits. So you know, when we hit a wall, or when we hit a player, and so on, um, I think we should add some effects to that. Now, let's just start off by making the effects. Uh, personally, I think the easiest thing is just to use the Unity Particle system. Of course, you can leave like bullet holes and whatever you want with images. It's a very known and normal thing to do. Um, however, I'm just going to make little particle impact effects and it's really going to be all handled in a similar way. So whatever you want to actually add, you can do that. Now, let me drag the muscle flash particle effect in here, which we already made because it, it already acts as like a quick little burst of an effect, which I think is good. I think that's kind of what we want. Now, that being said, I think we want them generally to be a bit slower. So maybe something more like that to be a little less in. I think let's maybe make the shape a larger angle. So maybe like 40% like that. So it like spreads out a bit more. And then maybe let's make it like a grayish effect. See if like gray yellow for example, how does that look? Still looks very, it's a little hard to say. It looks kind of nice. Let's maybe also have a maybe more sort of gray dark yellowy color like this one and then maybe let's make this a lighter gray i think that can work it's a little little hit effect on things okay so let's try and keep that around so i will just first of all make this not a prefab of the other one and instead make this a um environment impact effect right so something like that and i will put this into our prefabs folder so that we always have that and essentially what we want is when we hit something, we'll essentially tell uh, what we hit, where we hit, and we'll play the hit effect. Now let's also, actually keeping this out here and unpacking it again, let's also make a little blood effect. So, you know, when we actually hit someone, a little bit of, uh, you know, red, yellow stuff comes out of them like that, just to show a little bit more of a hit like this. And I think this can stay around maybe for a little bit longer. So lifetime can maybe be 0.25, something like that. So it'll like burst out a little bit more like that. We can make the shape even wider, maybe like 60, boom, like that. I think that kind of works. And then uh, keep the speed pretty low, 0.3 and 1.5 maybe. Whoops, sorry, like that. And I think yeah, I think that kind of works. And I like battles out like that. And we can save that. Of course, I'll call this uh, blood impact, something like that. All right, cool. So now going into our weapons. Um, we essentially want to add these here and let's first start by adding the actual functionality to the gun script. Um, and of course, let's also add the references. So let's serialize the reference here. Let's do private particle system. And this will be the uh, environment hit and that will be the player hit uh, effect by the end like that. Cool, just to easily read what it is through code. All right, cool. So now we essentially want to handle, you know, when we've actually hit something, right? So in this case, every time we click, we essentially want to do it, right? Um, the hard part here is right now we are essentially only wanting to hit a certain layer, which is obviously the player layer. Um, but this is no longer the case. We want to hit everything, which means now we hit everything. And if it's not a player, we won't get past this check essentially anyway. Um, that being said, we might still actually want the hit layer around because we still, of course, uh, oh yeah, we do actually hit walls and stuff with this, right? I already forgot. We made it in the hit layer earlier that the environment also counts. It's just ourselves we can't hit, which is good. Right, so essentially now, if it is not a player, we want to do one thing. And if it is a player, obviously we're already doing something. So I think that's how we should really go about it. Now let's try and think a little bit because it's easy enough to do locally. Um, the hard part is doing it um, possibly network, but let's start with just getting it done locally and then we can try and assess how we might prefer going about it. So let's start here where if we don't hit a player, let's do, and if we have at the environment hit effect, just making sure that it's not null, then we want to spawn it. So I want to instantiate the environment hit effect, which is like that. And we want to do it at the hit dot point, which is what we hit. And then we want to do it at the quaternion dot rotation, I think. Uh, look rotation it is to the hit dot normal now if you're not that familiar with vector maths this might be confusing why we're doing this exactly um, but i'll explain that in well let me just explain now essentially so when you hit something you hit the surface and the surface normal or the hit normal will be the direct direction out from the surface right so in this case if we look at it from up if the bullet comes in here 
you know, we shoot from here, we hit the wall here, the normal will be straight out of the wall, no matter what direction we shoot from, essentially, as long as we hit this wall, that the normal direction will be 90 degrees out from the wall's angle, right? So that's the, that's the hit normal, essentially. And that's why we're doing this, is we want the look rotation uh, of the effect. And actually, let's just double check that that is actually what we want, because sometimes they are... Um, so we essentially want the blue arrow to be turning out. Uh, and let's have this be set to local. And that seems to be correct. Yeah, so I think that's the way that we want it. Cool. All right, so hopefully that should work unless we mess something up. It might have to be negative normal, but I don't think so. Um, so let's try and go and set that up on the player real quick. So let's take both the pistol and the rifle. We can add the effects in here. So we can add the environment hit effect there and the blood impact effect there. All right, so let's just go and test this. And first of all, this is just local right now. So let's just test it fully locally. So let's just do one player that we're waiting for. And now when I hit the wall, you can see this little impact explosion comes out. Cool. And when I use this, you can see this little hit impact comes out and it works off of all surfaces, surfaces essentially. Awesome. So now we have that little effect and now we essentially just want the similar but bloody effect um, for the player. So that, once again, is very easy to do. It's actually the exact same here, except obviously this time we're first of all checking for the blood effect, just if that exists. So that'll be the, uh, whoops, that'll be the player hit effect. And that's of course also what we want to instantiate. So now let's just go to test that, make sure that works as well. But I imagine that should work just fine. And the next thing that we'll have to do is we'll have to figure out how we best network it. So now let's go here. And as you can see, whoops, when I shoot him, this little blood effect comes out of him. And then that makes it very easy to see when you've hit him and when you don't. Awesome, so now we already have a bit of feedback, but this will only be feedback on your local bullets. And you know, you might want players to tell others that you know they've hit something. Great, so the question is, how do we do that? Well, the first thing that I just noticed is we can actually go to our environment and blood particles here and the stop action, just have it be destroyed. Of course, if you wanna optimize it, you can always do object pooling and so on, but in our case, we're just gonna make it simple. It's really just so they don't linger around. Whoops. It's really just so they don't linger around in the hierarchy. So you can see how when I shoot, you can see it shows up out here in the hierarchy, but it'll disappear again. So you can see shoot and then it disappears. And that's essentially because we've set them now to destroy. So you can see they, they won't be lingering around out there forever. All right, cool. Now figuring out how we want to network these can be a little tougher. That's obviously an easy way to do it, which is just make an op service RPC and just make it run locally to make it feel instant for the local player. Private, void, environment, hit. And then we can just give the position and the normal. So we can give vector three position and we can give vector three normal. And then we can essentially you know, do the exact same piece of code, but just with this position and this normal. So it's the exact same as we essentially have up here except that we now just call the environment hit like this. So this should automatically network the environment hit. And of course we can do the same for the player hit. And I think we just might as it is easier to do. Um, but it technically isn't the most optimal necessarily. So the other players coming over here and you can see if he shoots the wall here in front of him, we can now see that his environment hits too, which is awesome. Cool. Uh, I think also, hold on, just to make them fit in a little bit more, I'm gonna first of all darken this and I'm gonna make them slightly see through. I think that's gonna just make them look a little bit nicer, stand out a little bit less. Um, but you know, obviously small details. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, that's a little sidetrack. The question is how do we wanna convey that we've hit the player? The, the thing is, right, let me try and draw this out just very quickly in paint and make it very pretty. Let's say that we have the enemy player. Let's say that this is top down, right? So we have one player here, one player here. Now the player from over here shoots this player, right? So he shoots him, hits him here, right? So that has hit him right there on the side. And this should essentially make it, you know, uh, burst out from here with the effect. But the issue is if you have ping, this is gonna be greatly delayed for everyone else, right? So it might burst out over here for me, but the issue is, and we might see the hit, right? This is the issue of a local, uh, for fully local hit setup, which is also why it's not cheat proof. But let's say that he moves and he's moved now up here the burst will still for everyone come from here when you finally sent you know, out that the hit comes from here, which might look weird. So in order to combat this, what we might want to do instead is we can actually tell everyone that we've hit him here in his local position. So in relation to him, shoot the blood effect from here. So that means now that when he moves, 
the blood effect essentially will move with him. You know, wherever that he has moved to ever since, the blood effect will have moved. And this will essentially uh, hide, you know, the lag or whatever better. And that's really what it is with a lot of networking. Of course, there's methods you can do to prevent this automatically, which are a lot more difficult to make. But essentially with simple multiplayer, like what we're making right now, um, this, in my opinion, is one of the best ways and you really have to kind of smoke and mirror multiplayer and it's it's one of the magics of it and, and will forever be a puzzle on how you can do it perfectly. But I'm just going to do it how I want to do it. So let's first of all do the run locally true again. Private void and then let's say player hit. And now we want to send the player that we've hit. So that's the player health. So that's the player. We want to send the vector 3 local position and then we want to send the vector 3 for the normal again. And so essentially now, what we've got to do is we have to now send this. So we'll send the player health of the player that was hit. We'll send the hit dot, uh, well not the hit dot point now. We want to send the player health dot transform dot transform point, I believe is the correct one. And this will then be, uh, no, this is from, I think it's in first transform point. I am not that good with this math, so bear with me. So I think it might be this. And then we also want to send the hit normal. I think that is what we want to send. So now that they instantiated, we can essentially have this here now. But now that they instantiated, they will take the player hit effect. Oh, sorry, not player hit effect. They'll take the player dot transform dot transform points to the local position. And they'll of course use the normal here. I think if I'm not completely mistaken, that this should be correct. <laughs> um, let's see if it looks somewhat correct. Uh, so now we're back at two players expected. And let's try and see if we go and now shoot him. Go and shoot him here. You can see the hit effect seems to come off of him correctly. And now it should essentially alleviate that uh, lag issue that we saw. And let's also just check if we shoot him here. Can we, yeah, we, you know, you can now see the blood actually coming off of your local player as well whenever you're getting shot. Awesome. That seems to work really well. Uh, let's see, we just got a quick null reference here. Whoops, I shouldn't double click on that. I should go in here. Uh, and this is obviously because the player is now null because it was despawned. So let's just do and the player actually exists just to confirm that, you know, hasn't been despawned. Uh, and you can also do an extra dot player dot transform in case you want to be really safe. Those should never. Uh, not align these two but you know in my opinion you can never really be too safe all right cool so this now seems to work now you have some hit effects obviously if you also want to add audio and stuff like that on the hits this is where you do it if you'd maybe want to add like a, a local effect you know like a red vignette around the edges for example this is also where you'd hit it what you could just do is you could do something like if player that is owner then you know you grab whatever handles your vignette that could be like a like your vignette handler, for example, dot do vignette. Uh, and then you could, you know, give it the type of damage or whatever you wanted to do. But that's essentially how you do it, because then you'd know that, oh, it's me that's been hit. Somebody's sending the signal that I've been hit. You can either, of course, do that. Or to be fair, it might be actually cleaner to just under player health when the health changes, you know, because this is already local to you. Um, you also just do the vignette here, right? So if the new health... Uh, you know, if the if new health is lower than essentially what your previous health was or something like that, then, you know, you've taken damage and you can run the vignette, for example. That might be a way to go about it. Hopefully this makes sense and hopefully you learn something for every video. Um, I really hope you enjoy these. Uh, please do like, comment and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. And uh, yeah, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.